hey, John here with Night Shining Hammer Paint Correction, Ceramic Coatings, and Detailing. We have a brand new Hummer EV here. It has a dealership installed coating on it. Some kind of ceramic coating. I don't know if they outsourced it or did it themselves. But uh, we have a longtime customer that has had coating work done by us and decided to let the dealership install this coating. It was less than three months ago. Let me get this spare tire out of the way because we're getting ready to do a strip wash and a decon and remove what's left of this so-called coating. get the camera off the tripod or tripod the tripod here and bring in and show you what's going on Now it looks like on the gloss part of the painted surfaces, there might be something there, but I don't know. Maybe something on the door. So what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna do our normal strip wash process, which includes a pre-soak, a wash, an iron remover, and then we're gonna rinse the vehicle off again and see if there's any sort of protection left behind. And if there is, we're gonna use Fireball Wax Off to remove the rest of the existing coating. Then we're gonna get it in the shop, get it dry, polish the gloss surfaces, and apply Fireball Butterfly. It is a seven-year coating. It's going to get applied to the satin or matte surfaces on this Hummer EV, as well as the gloss surfaces and any raw plastic trim. And then as a bonus, we're going to put Fireball Typhoon on all the glass for our longtime customer. So without further ado, let's get started with this process. Okay, this is our pre-soak for this job. This is a combination of built hamber auto foam or auto foam and extreme solutions bioclean. It's slightly acidic with hot water. We wanted to make sure there wasn't any traffic film on this thing before declaring this coating dead. Once we get it rinsed here, we're going to be applying our strip wash which our new favorite strip wash is Vonix Citron Strip Wash. Two ounces of that plus an ounce of Vonix Impact, which is their citrus-based degreaser. A lot of this video has been dramatically sped up for time purposes because nobody wants a 30-minute video to have to sit and watch through. Or at least that's my opinion. Depends on what it is. But since this is just a pre-soak and a strip wash and all that cool stuff, we're trying to, to determine how much of this coating is left behind after these two. And as you'll see here in the next clip, I bring you in for a first person view you'll be able to tell what, if anything, of this coating is left behind, and I would declare it dead after a strip wash. Unbelievable. But because there were some remnants behind of whatever this was, we're, because it's a matte or satin finish, and you can't polish it, we're gonna use Fireball Wax Off to ensure we are dealing with a bare, clean, naked, matte, clear-coated surface. And it's very easy to use. You put some in an applicator, you apply it on the panel you want to remove the wax sealant or coating from, 
let it haze and rinse it off. And then you have to rewash the vehicle. And I will spare everybody the little nuances of just washing a vehicle. If all of you want to see our complete wash process, there are a couple videos out there on the channel with that, but that was for a coated vehicle. If you want to see how we strip and get ready for a coating, maybe I'll make a video if everybody wants one. Well, here we're going to rinse off the wax off, and then we're going to go back around and wash the vehicle. And then I'll bring everybody in for a first person view so you can see what is left if anything and there shouldn't be and see there's just a couple spots that for whatever reason the coating stayed and you'll find out how good of a vehicle washer you are if you use fireball wax off because everybody misses a spot guaranteed everybody will miss a spot and as you can see here the little parts that did have a little bit of protection left behind are completely gone we're going to get it pulled in the shop here and we're going to polish the gloss surfaces after we get them masked off to protect the matte paint. Like I said, we've masked off between the gloss and the matte just to keep extra protection. The last thing you want to do was bump a matte or satin clear coated surface with a polisher because you're going to make it glossy and there's no way to fix it unless you respray it. So for this, we're going to be using Angel Wax Redemption and a Rupes Yellow Fine Polishing Pad. There wasn't a lot of damage, but we wanted to make sure that there was no coating left behind. And as we went around, not only the piano black, but I'm not 100% sure if it was like a black diamond metallic or a charcoal gray metallic but when we polish the trim around this hummer we saw gloss jump so we knew right then wherever this was coated at or whatever they did do it they didn't do any kind of prep to it all except maybe a wash really sad if you ask me it doesn't matter whether it was the dealership that did it or if they outsourced it or whatever Whatever the case might be, there's a reason that dealerships have gotten the nickname Steelerships because they just stole our repeat customers' money for some BS product. And I didn't want to add insult to injury and say, hey, this is why you should have come to us, but I don't think I had to. I think because of all the other vehicles that we've done and our work spoke for themselves, he realized that maybe he should have just not gotten it done there and came to us in the first place. But that happens to everybody, folks. And because we are using Fireball Butterfly on this Hummer, it is a seven year coating. We're gonna stay within the family with the panel prep, use Fireball Reborn. We're going to spray a lot on here to make sure that there is no kind of contaminants or wax off residue or any kind of surfactant residue on the matte surface as well as the polishing oils on the gloss surfaces. So we're going to shake the coating up and we're going to prime the applicator block here. Make sure we have a lot of product on. And with Fireball, you're gonna make an X, and then you're gonna make a box, and then you're gonna fill it in one pass. You do not do a crisscross pattern with Fireball coatings. And because we did a test spot with a timer, we know that we have a seven to nine minute window before we have to wipe the coating off.
And if you miss that window, or if the window changes, which I will talk about here in a couple minutes, it's like trying to wipe molasses off because it is a very high solids coating. And if you miss that window, it is a bear to remove. And that's not the fault of the coating. That's the fault of the installer, i.e. me. I don't know what changed, but like I was talking about, we had a seven to nine minute window and I don't know if it got more humid outside. We're in a controlled environment here. It's air conditioned in here. It was around 70 degrees when I started. Even today, it's 69 degrees in here. It's not quite a meat locker in here by any stretch of the imagination. But we cut that window down to five minutes after going seven and we were like, whoa, what happened? Happens to all of us folks. Sometimes little nuances like that affect what is going on, even in a controlled environment. I could not imagine having to coat in a hot and humid environment anymore. We did that for the first three years we were in business and it was an absolute nightmare to do in the summertime. Not missing anything when it comes to the coating. We're putting it on the off-road lights, the covers, the lenses, etc. Obviously, you don't see me taking the covers off here because we're doing the outside, but we did coat the inside as well. I always set a timer on my Apple Watch and I saw that I had enough time remaining. So I was like, okay, let's go ahead and coat the headlights and the whole light system underneath the front of the frunk here because it's not technically a hood anymore because there's no engine. So went ahead and did that thinking I had plenty of time. And when I went to go wipe this coating off, I was like, whoa, what happened? And I don't know what changed in our shop, but things do happen, folks, and you got to roll with the punches. And I'm sure some of you are asking, well, John, what could you have done if you couldn't wipe the coating back off? And that's a very easy problem to fix. Just reapply the coating and it'll liquefy what is flashing and you can wipe it off very easily. It's no different than taking care of a cured high spot. If a cleaner polish like Angel Wax Perfect Polish won't remove the high spot, you simply just reapply the coating and it'll soften that up because of the solvents in the coating and you can wipe the high spot away. And it may not look like it here and I don't know what's coming through on the camera because this is sped up but this was like removing glue. You can't see the look on my face. And I even started a little early before the timer went off. And I was like, whoa, how did we miss our window? What changed? And we just lowered it by a couple minutes and we were fine. As you can see, I'm not like scrubbing for my life to get it off, but it was a little over grabby or tacky than it should have been. That's why if you're thinking about being a coating installer out there, if you're going to do this in a controlled environment without air conditioning, make sure that you choose a coating company that you can use coatings outside. Because a lot of these higher solid coatings, you would have not a lot of fun trying to apply them. They are very temperamental to heat and especially humidity. And it is not a fun chore to wipe off something that has flashed way too soon. Or instead of being able to do a whole hood or whole frunk in this case, or a half of it, and you're doing around a one foot section at a time, 
it's going to take you forever to get around the vehicle. And ultimately, that's what you don't want to have happen is for you to have to take forever to apply the coating to a vehicle. So if you're out in the heat and humidity, find yourself a pro-grade coating that is user-friendly for mobile or non-controlled environments. Okay, that rant about that is over. As you can see, I'm getting the rest of the coating off. Gonna go ahead and go around the rest of the vehicle, get the painted surfaces done, then we're gonna apply Fireball Typhoon to the glass. Then we're gonna let it cure for a minimum of four hours. In this case, it'll be overnight. We're gonna pull it outside and check for high spots. And then we're gonna get it outside the next day for a first person view of how sweet this thing turned out. I don't know if it's coming through on the camera, but this thing looks gorgeous. It's got a nice deep, rich, almost, almost aluminum, or my wife said that it almost looked like it was bronzed a little bit, but I think it looks like brushed stainless steel, a dark stainless steel. This thing looks absolutely great. As a bonus, we applied two layers of Dura dressing to all the tires. So it's gonna have a six to 12 month tire coating on it. The owner was ecstatic when he saw it. He knew right away that whatever the dealership did or had done was some sort of, excuse my French, some sort of half-ass product. And while I was outside, it started to rain or sprinkle as it was humid as hell and as you can see there's a high contact angle for the water that's falling from the sky tried to capture it on the video but this thing looked killer outside Final thought segment on dealership coatings. It doesn't matter what shop does your coating. If you're somebody local watching this video, it doesn't matter if you come to us. I mean, yeah, I want you to come to us. Of course, as a business owner, I want you to come to us. But it doesn't matter if you come to me or Joe Blow up the street, as long as they're a reputable shop, they're installing professional grade coatings and not any of this Chinese eBay crap which a lot of the dealerships are installing. I know a lot of dealerships are installing glass coat by Simonize. And a few years ago, our good friend Brian over at Apex Detail did a full video on what kind of properties this coating has. I believe he tested it against Jade, which is an entry level prosumer grade two year coating. And it didn't fare very well at all. I don't think it made it through a couple chemicals in his 10 wash test and it was starting to show signs of failing. So as a consumer, please know what you're paying for. A ceramic coating is just not, it's just not a ceramic coating. And then there are all these companies on Facebook that say, oh, this ceramic coating does blah, blah, blah. And it's, and it's something that sprays. That's a sealant folks. That is not, <clears throat> excuse me. That is not a true grade coating. A real coating is thick and viscous and you spread with an applicator block. It's got a flash point. You have to worry about temperature and, and humidity and all those things. So once again, I'm John. We are Knight Shining Armor Paint Correction, Ceramic Coating, Sand Detailing. I appreciate everybody that has subscribed to our channel. If you're new to the channel, please, Hit that like button, hit that notification bell. If you've been with us for a while, thank you for your support. I appreciate all of you. We will see everybody in the next video.